Hi, welcome to the Gears of Eden Alpha 1 tutorial video. I'm Sludge, the creative director of Gears of Eden. And before we get started, really quick, I just want to give you an overview of where we are at in the process of development for Gears of Eden. Uh, this is not a game. This is not even a demo for a game yet. Our first alpha build is really just a early, early prototype um, that will eventually lead up to our first demo. So yes, we're talking about an alpha for a demo. We're very early in the process. And so why are we doing this? Why are we getting it out right now? Well, we're a very young, very small team and we consist of a bunch of volunteers right now. And we need to get some support to continue at a, at a better pace. So it's taken us about a year to get to this stage. We don't want to take another year to complete our demo though. Um, we'd like to get it done a little quicker. And so we're inviting people early, early on into this process to get involved, to be part of this journey with us. I know that's not going to be for everyone, but if you're the kind of person that likes seeing the, the, the concept and the project coming together, if you like what we're doing and you want to see more of the story we want to tell, uh, then getting involved and helping us with the alpha testing and maybe supporting us to help us get this demo completed faster is something we would really appreciate. I'll have a little bit more information at the end of this video about how to get involved in that way. All right, so before we jump into the larger parts of the tutorial, going over some of the function, I just want to remind you, at any time you can pr press the escape key, that's going to bring up this menu. And under settings slash help, you'll find all sorts of information. So we have the controls over here on the right if you need help. We have the audio settings here, which you can adjust to your preference. Um, and just some quick information here in case you get stuck. So there's ways to get unstuck that um, will be handy. With that out of the way, let's start the tutorial. So you can see I've been driving around. Um, that's one of the first things you'll be doing in the alpha. So that's just your standard WASD keys to you know, manipulate the machine here. Uh, one of the things you'll need to do early on is charge up your battery. So you know at the start, you've sort of been asleep for a while and you're waking up. Uh, so to do that, you press the E key. That'll open these solar panels. And you can see over here on the bottom right, we sort of have a strength of charge indicator. You can continue to drive around as you're charging. We have a speed reduction penalty in right now. Um, you guys will have the chance and when you complete the alpha to, if you are gonna be play testing the alpha for us, um, we'll have a survey at the end. So you can let us know, like if you think the penalty on charging is too much, you know, let us know in the survey. Um, there is a couple other ways you can charge your battery. One, you'll see these towers around. If you drive up to these, these sort of use uh, like sort of an induction charging method. And so you'll see if we drive near one of these towers, a couple things happen. First, down in the bottom left, uh, to the left of the battery, you'll see this signal indicator, which starts out, has one bar, which means it's charging you slowly, and then a second bar, and then a third bar. Um, you can double dip on this, so I can put my panels out and charge really fast at a beacon if you know it's if there's you know, daylight. So these beacons are really helpful at nighttime. Uh, power management is a big uh, issue in this game. You want to make sure you're not going to be stranded at night. So. When nighttime comes, uh, make sure you're within range of a beacon station because your solar panels will not be able to help you at all. Um, if you do run out of battery, you'll still be able to move, but it is really, really slow. It's even slower than when you have the panels out. So keep that in mind. Um, in order to craft, you're going to need to find resources. And to do that, you're going to use your spectrometer scanner. So right now that is the two key. So I press the two. And you can see I found something over here. This is ice. I also note that when you're using the spectrometer scanner, it does have a pretty high energy cost. So the best way to use the scanner is to toggle it on and off and sort of do some pulse scanning that way. I, I don't recommend leaving it running. Uh, we would like your feedback on that on the survey as well. We could make it the scanner work such that it is a pulse where you press a button and it sends out one pulse looking for resources. Um, or we can continue to leave it where it's a system you toggle on and off. So appreciate any feedback you have on that. So I'll I can go over to the ice. When I'm on top of a resource node, I get this panel over this UI interface on the left pops up. This is telling me the name of the resource. 
And then this represents um, how many levels you can dig into the ground. So right now we can only reach three levels down with our current drill. And fortunately for us, all the units of the ice are in the top two levels. And they're green, and that means we can reach them all. So I'm going to go ahead and show the drilling and collection mechanic now. Um, this is a little bit cumbersome right now. We are going to be fixing this in the future, but right now it's a two key process. So you hit the F button, which unfolds your drill, and then you hit the G button to actually activate your drill. So like I said, we will simplify that into one action. Um, over on the left, you'll see this meter fills up. When that completes, you collect one unit. So if we let this run, we'll collect uh, all these units of ice. You can open your panels while you're drilling and that will help you save some energy. So you know, I sort of recommend anytime you're drilling, if there is light available, go ahead and open your panels. So I'm gonna close my panels up and then I need to press F again to sort of unfold the drill before I can move. All right, so that's how you collect resources. Um, so what I was saying, yeah, right now you're only going to be able to find ice and iron. There actually are things like cobalt and ruthenium and gold and other elements um, that are in the game. You just, you won't know they're there right now. The, the ability to upgrade your major components like your spectrometer and your motor and things like that, that will be done at the base in a crafting table sort of setup. And we do not have that implemented at this stage. That'll be one of the next things. Um, if we get to the Alpha 2 release pretty soon, you'll be seeing that. So right now you can craft some minor things inside your rover. Those are limited to fuel cells that we saw earlier. And also you can upgrade your drill bits. And upgrading your drill bit allows you to uh, increase your, or actually reduce the collection time for resources. Um, and also allows you to drill into harder materials. So as you upgrade your spectrometer, you upgrade your drill, and you upgrade your drill bits, you'll be able to reach further and actually recover more dense materials. Okay, so here we found a cluster of iron. You can see I just ran out of battery also. So we're gonna charge up a little bit here. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get all the iron in this area and do some crafting. I'll actually go ahead and do some crafting uh, right now so to bring up the crafting interface we're gonna go to the inventory screen you do that by pressing I and we you've seen this before so here you can see we have 22 pieces of ice and if I, we have right now five units of iron and if we want to craft we just click on a blank inventory spot okay and that will bring up this crafting interface uh, we have these little arrows, these little chevrons at the top right that will let you toggle between options for crafting. As I mentioned, you can only craft from your rover itself these two items. More crafting will be done at the base in a future alpha release. All right, so there are three tiers of fuel cells we can craft. Tier two, tier three, tier four. And you can see we cannot craft the second tier because it requires this resource that we don't have, which is cobalt. Um, however, and then this one we can't craft because it requires another resource. It's also locked until we craft the second one. Um, however, we can see that we have enough resources to craft this tier of fuel cell. We need two iron and we have six and we need three ice and we have 22. So I'm gonna go ahead and start crafting that. And this takes 30 seconds to craft, and you can do other things while it's crafting, so... Let me see, there's another pocket of iron. So I'll go ahead and collect this. You can see there's one unit we won't be able to reach there. Um, and our fuel cell is almost done. When this is done, it'll pop over into the inventory, and we will have two fuel cells. All right, so our crafting is complete and we have two fuel cells now. Fuel cells are really helpful. You want to create some of these during the daytime and use them in the night, um, to, especially if you get stuck, if you get away from a beacon. All right, the other thing we can craft 
is the drill bit. So the same thing, there's different tiers of the drill bit. Right now you're only going to be able to craft the first one just because of the resources required. And you can see this takes 25 units of iron. We have 10 right now. Again, these are all things that we want your feedback on, so there will be a survey uh, that you can complete after testing the alpha. And you know, let us know what you think of the cost, the crafting times, all that stuff. All right, our crafting should be complete now. We should have a drill bit, and of course we have a couple fuel cells. So I want to show you how to equip these. There's a couple ways you can do it. So let's do the drill bit first. You can equip it by hitting this button, which should be pretty obvious. Um, you can also, if you click and drag, you'll see the panel over here on the left will change as soon as I click and drag. And it will highlight this drill bit indicator. And if I drag it over there, you'll see the um, stroke around the icon glow. So we can just drop that in. And so now this color changes, it indicates that we have a tier 2 drill bit applied. Uh, this bit's going to allow us to drill a little bit faster, and like I said before, it'll allow us to drill into harder materials. The fuel cell works much the same way. I can click the use button, or I can click and drag and drop on the battery here. And if you will watch, I have 21% power right now. If I drop this on the battery, I go up to 41%. If I click and hit use, I again would go up 20%. So that's how the crafting system works and that's how you equip and use the items right now that you can craft. Uh, and that's pretty much um, all I want to go over in this quick tutorial. Um, I can mention the camera controls, so you the scroll wheel lets you zoom in and out. You pivot around the rover by right clicking and dragging. Um, if you want to reset the camera position, you hit the period key, and that brings it back behind the rover. If I hit left control, that's going to change the camera mode. So this is the default camera mode. The camera will try to stay behind the rover. Or if you move the camera, it will try to stay wherever you've affixed it. Now if I hit left control one time, it's gonna you're not going to see any changes right away. But now as I turn, the camera is no longer trying to stay behind the rover. It's sort of just staying in a position um, independent of the, the rover's actual orientation. And if I hit control again, I'll go into the first person point of view camera <clears throat> or first person perspective. This is very helpful when you're indoors, um, if you're driving in a base or anywhere where there's a lot of a detail and you need to make sure you're on a very specific path. Um, you can move the camera a little bit with your mouse just moving the cursor around. If I hit control again, it's going to go into free camera mode. The camera's not going to move at all unless you control it. So you can control the camera with the arrow keys. Here I'm doing left arrow, right arrow. Uh, you can also if you hit the forward slash button, it gets rid of the cursor. Uh, you can move the mouse, um, uh, you move the free camera around by moving the mouse. And then if you get rid of the cursor, you can use the left and right mouse buttons. To move the camera up and down. You can move the camera forward and back with the forward arrow and back arrow. And then if I hit left control again, I'm back at the default camera. Um, I will point out the Q key brings up an antenna, which you can see open here. And it will drain your battery. Um, I don't recommend using it right now because it has no function in the first alpha. This will have a, a purpose later on. It will be used for uh, interacting with the base remotely and um, helping with some with navigation and also controlling some NPC characters that you'll have access to. So you'll have to check out future builds for that. All right, that's going to wrap up this video and this tutorial. If you're interested if in the alpha testing, if you want to, you know, get involved, uh, there's it's easy to do. Um, there's no, you don't have to sign an NDA. There's no restriction. You can share um, any videos you record. You just need to sign up for a newsletter at gearsofeden.com. 
And then just let us know after you've signed up and activated your account, reach out to us on Twitter or Facebook and just say, hey, can you put me in an early testing group and we'll do that for you. Otherwise we have uh, you know, probably about 750 people interested right now. And those are just gonna be going out in random groups. Um, but we would like to prioritize people who are active and engaged with us. So you know, do that, let us know and we'll put you in an earlier group so you can test it. Uh, more quickly rather than having to wait a few weeks. All right, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your support. If you have questions on Gears of Eden, on our alpha or anything else, let us know. Again, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, uh, we're here on Twitch. So get in touch and we will talk to you soon. Thanks, bye.